Good morning, explorers. Good morning. We're in Limerick, Ireland today. It's a beautiful day today. Yes, definitely. We wanted to show you some of the things that you can do in and around Limerick. Yes, because everything takes a, a couple minutes to get to it, especially places like this. Yes. <laughs> so we're starting here at Lochger, which is a park and conservation area. Yep, and it has a visitor center too. Now, we've been to many parks in Florida, but they don't quite offer these scenes. Uh, this view is incredible. Yeah. But you can't swim in that lake, so we won't be swimming there today. Yes, and before any of you ask, no, there are no alligators in there, especially ones with axes. Get away from my nest. <laughs> I think we're just going to take you around and show you the park. Yep, and this park is free too, so let's go. Now, this is a lock, but I don't think Nessie's in here. But I could be wrong. Behind me is something called a lime kiln. This was essential for farming back then. They would put all the lime in there and they would let it burn for like 48 hours before raking it out. Okay, so they do have a visitor center and a playground this way. Inside the visitor center there's an exhibition that costs a small fee. It's five dollars per person, but if you tell them you're a family of four or five, then uh, they'll give you a discount when paid only 15. Yeah, this is kind of what the houses would have looked like, and then they moved to here. Right, they're not sure why they went from square to um, circular. I wondered if it had something to do with the wind or the weather. Yeah. There's little drawers that you can yeah. see. The stone Things that they found in the lake. This was what they found. It's a replica, of course, but they found this in the lake. Yeah, and it's called the Locker Shield. Looks like you can uh, try on some clothes here. Is it me? Eh, almost. Definitely worth checking that out. It gives you all the information you would need about the different period pieces that they found here. Even if you don't want to pay the fee to see the visitor center, that's fine. Stop in and get yourself a map. This gives you a detail of all the area. And then the GPS doesn't work around here so well, so you can kind of follow along in the car at the different sites here. This is the spectacles, and they are named so because of placement of a circular hut site that was adjacent to a circular rock outcrop. It's pretty cool. It's actually defined by a couple of circular areas where the huts would be. And then you can actually see the walls that they had that were around the properties. So they had actually had it fenced in. And it's from the early medieval period of uh, 400 through 1200 AD that this was actually occupied. Quite a trek, but the views are stunning. Definitely worth it. All right, so we made it up to the top. It was 110 steps. But who's counting? <laughs> yeah, and you were kind of going twisting through the forest. It was insane. But you get this beautiful view up here. Check it out. You can see the whole lake and the mountain. You see cows on the riverside. I think I see like a little castle over that way. So wonderful place to take some photos. After you get at the top viewing point, most of the rest of what you're going to see are just viewing spots from across the lake. Yeah. 
where we're going now is we're hopping in the car and we're going to drive to the other sites. So that's kind of how they have you look at everything. That's why you need the map, so mm -hmm. you can find them kind of. One thing to note, they do have a guided tour that you can take because some of these uh, areas are overgrown and you're not really sure what you're looking at. Yeah, it's best to have an expert take you around. Yeah, but you can book in advance. This is a wedge tomb, as they call it. It looks like a, a kind of a typical graveyard and it was divided up. They said in, when they actually excavated that they had found uh, at least eight adults and four children. Like we said, we're following along with the map. Unfortunately, you have to really know what you're looking for. The new church area, it does match up with the map and the lake here at M. And there's this little pull-off area, so. This is the Grangestone Circle. Looks like there's a little bit of parking out here, so you may be able to stop and actually get out and look at it, but let's go take a look. Yeah, and this one's easy to find compared yeah. to the other. Okay, so we're finished with Locker. Yep. There's a couple cool little shots that you got to see. It's about a 30 minute drive and we are over here at uh, King John's Castle now. Mm -hmm. uh, one recommendation is when you put in the GPS to come over here, put in King John Castle parking because they have a parking lot here and it's huge. Yeah. Yeah, so put that in and then it'll take you right to the parking lot and then the castle's right across the street. Yeah, so there's a town all around it as you know you probably would expect. People would live around the castle so all yep. these towns grew. Anyway, uh, we're gonna walk through town and we're gonna head over to the castle. Yep, let's go. They got a Discover Limerick's hidden history walking tour. That sounds like a lot of fun. Bookings are required but the tours are Monday through Friday. kind of an interesting and scenic walk. You just come right in through town, you're about two minutes away from where you parked. Yes, yeah, so it's not bad at all. Yeah. We're inside the castle, we're inside the museum of the castle, so it goes through parts of the castle. They're real friendly here. It's $15 per person. If you are a family, you'll get a discounted rate. Yeah, we're learning that all over Ireland. Tell them your family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interestingly enough, we were joking as we were walking up about King John. And we were like, is this Robin Hood or something? It technically is. It really is the real King John from Robin Hood. Yes, now King John actually had uh, ruled over Ireland. Um, he was Henry II's son. Yeah. But he actually was only in Ireland twice, I think, that was actually recorded. And apparently this is his castle. Yeah. So when you first walk in and you pay for your ticket, you can ask all kinds of questions. We had a nice conversation with a gentleman downstairs. He told us all about the castle. He walked us through this whole map. He told us all the history. I mean, we had like a 30-minute conversation with him. It was really cool. This is talking about like law in Ireland. You would have to pay compensation to the victim's family if you killed the king, the son of a king. It would be 105 milk cows. Yeah, you would think that the son of a king. Would yeah, you would just be instantly killed, which right? you probably were. <laughs> well, yeah. But then again, I guess it puts a price on everything. Henry II had appointed King John as the Lord of Ireland. And when he passed, Richard became King of England. But then when Richard passed, John became 
Lord of Ireland and King of England, which was the first time in history that the book, somebody had held both titles. So behind me, it actually says in 1210, this castle was ordered to be built by King John. So it's pretty old. As we said, King John had only been to Ireland twice. It says, although the castle bears his name, he never actually visited. In fact, it is only became known as the King John Castle centuries after his death. Michael's favorite part about Ireland is that you at all these museums that you can dress up. I feel like I'll rip this if I put it on, so <laughs> is it me? It's beautiful. A medieval traitor. Yeah. I found a siege tunnel. It looks like this is the tunnel that people had used during the siege. Go see with the tunnels. Oh, it's a little compact. Oh, and then it opens up back over here. Very, very claustrophobic. Yeah. yeah, it's very tight in there. Yeah. <laughs> Lift the cannonball, see how heavy it really is. In 1691, Gay Cobain, the size of Gay Trees. Can you imagine getting hit by that? No. One of the things that we like to do is touch history. That's just incredible to know that. You know, this has been here for a long time. Look at this old structure. It's probably the original uh, buildings too. So just beyond this wall, they found corpses there. And they actually brought in a priest to bless them, but they didn't want to disturb the graves, so they left them there. It's kind of eerie. In the 1980s, they were they had already 13 houses here, and they were building more in this area. And when they started digging down for the foundations, they found all this like abandoned, like old houses and stuff like that. So they had to stop. These three boys have been bad and now they're in the stockade. All right, so we showed up at an interesting time. What's happening behind us isn't restoration. They're actually setting up a concert here that'll be occurring in a few weeks. They have um, hired actors that'll give you information. Yeah, so come up here and you can ask questions. They're all dressed in period pieces. It looks like a riot. head down to the Great Hall. This is one of the things they found when they were excavating and uh, trying to build their houses. Look at this view. So I really like the strategic placement of this castle, how it's right up against the river. All of, like we were mentioning earlier, all of the goods could be delivered along waterway. So anything that was coming in from England or other countries could be exported or imported here. Another interesting point is that we're standing on a round tower and for defensive purposes, this was changed from square to round because it makes it a lot harder for an attack to get through. So it's for defensive purposes. It's uh, harder to scale. I think somebody got a little violent with his coin purse, but this would be the treasurer. downstairs does not do justice for what you actually see in this cave. We are weak and miserable sick, half living and half dead. That is heavy. The drawbridge would have been right outside here. And you can see down, they could have thrown stuff at them. There are nice little steps here.
And whatever goes up must come down. All right, and the entrance point. This is where the drawbridge would be. From what we were told, it doesn't exist anymore. They haven't restored it. All they have is the barricaded doors. Is it neat? We got the three dinguses. Souvenir we wanted from Ireland was an Irish cook. So we found a cute little one. Adding another magnet to the collection. Okay, explorers, I think this is where we're going to leave you. We hope you enjoyed our brief little visit to Limerick. Yeah, we only had uh, 24 hours to explore the city, but there's so much more to do here. Give yourself a couple days if you want to see it all. They have the Hunts Museum, Art Gallery, there's Museum of the People of Limerick, and then there's the Limerick Museum itself. So lots of museums in the city, but they all close at 5. Yes, so give yourself plenty of time or a couple days. Yeah, the two things that we did today, uh, each thing took about two to three hours. So especially this museum, because it was a lot of um, parts. Very of interactive, and then there's yeah. things to watch, and people are putting on uh, little skits. Yeah, so this one is really worth coming to check out. Mm -hmm. And Lockhart was amazing with the views. I actually want to go back there and kayak that river. Yeah, that would oh, be fun. It would be so much fun. <laughs> well, as always, Thank you for coming along with us. Keep exploring. And we'll see you in Cork. Sir, the castle is under siege. What? What? But don't worry, we have men going down there. Okay! okay. okay.